For more on this, we're joined by Chris Doyle in London. He's the director of the Council for Arab-British Understanding. Chris, it's always good to speak to you on this news hour. Now, with this resolution being non-binding, it is, though, politically and symbolically powerful, especially when we see countries that are U.S. allies like Japan, Australia and Canada, who had previously abstained from such votes, actually changing their positions on this. This resolution has incredible moral weight. I mean, just think about it. There's 193 members of the United Nations, 153 of them voted for and only 10 of them against. So it's quite clear that what we are seeing now is not a, a difference of opinion. There was a vote in October where 120 countries uh, voted in favor of a ceasefire, but this is a much sharper division. It exposes, I think, a lot of anger amongst many of those 153 states about the situation. They see what is going on in Gaza as something completely unacceptable, the sheer scale of the atrocities and the horror that has been witnessed, the way in which UN agencies are having to plead for support in order to be able to do their work to keep life going in, in the Gaza Strip. So I think it emphasizes that the United States, Israel are extremely isolated. So too are those countries that abstained, like Britain, the country I'm from, but also countries like Germany. So as they get more isolated, it is a sign that much of the global south, but not only there, as you rightly point out, many countries really do feel that the US is not showing the sort of leadership on the world stage that it should be, and that they may well start to looking look elsewhere for that sort of international leadership if this continues. Chris, do you think this isolating, this icing out, if we can call it that now, of, of Israel, with even Biden saying that Israel is losing global support, will that actually force Israel to change its operations at this point? Because it's taken the UN and so many countries so many weeks now on the back of the killings of thousands of people in Gaza to get to this point where we're looking at a moral high ground, but it's not changing anything right now for those living in Gaza. Well, it's day 67 since those attacks on the 7th of October. Of course, Israelis collectively are extremely angry about those attacks, but I think that many diplomats are saying this has gone too far, that this actually isn't in the end gonna help with long-term Israeli security, that they may well win militarily but lose politically once again. And yes, they are losing support. People are questioning, as Joe Biden himself has said, as to whether the United States is losing its moral center. And one hears the whole time so much discussion about what exactly is the end goal in all of this, confusing signals coming from Israel but none of the end goals that we're hearing about, whether it's expulsion of Palestinians, uh, whether it is a long enduring Israeli reoccupation of the Gaza Strip, that is the internal part of the Gaza Strip, because it has been an occupation of it. None of these are going to be acceptable. And increasingly, also, a lot of pressure on Israeli activity in the West Bank, where we have seen so much settler violence. We see the United States and Belgium announcing that they're going to impose uh, visa bans on extremist settlers. The United Kingdom has indicated that it's going to go down that route as well, which would be very welcome. So there is going to be consequences for Israel in all of this in continuing. And of course, the progress that it's made in its own regional relationships has also been set back maybe years because of all of this. All those normalization deals, we've seen Jordan pulling its ambassador and those peace deals with Jordan and Israel, are they at risk? Well, arguably. So Israel, yes, does have a lot to lose. I think that it'll probably try to wind up the, in, the intense part of its military operations by the end of this year. But at what cost? How many tens of thousands of Palestinians would have been killed and what will be left in, in Gaza by that stage? And I think after it slows that down, we'll see a low intensi 
intensity conflict perhaps in Gaza, uh, where they try to mop up uh, bits of Hamas leadership that they can find. But at the moment, yes, Israel is isolated, but it's isolated because of its own actions. It's responsible for its isolation. Mm -hmm. Chris Doyle, always appreciate your analysis. Speaking to us there from London, thank you so much.